hip joint is uh, consists from the main part called the acetabulum and the other part is the head and neck of the uh, femur the acetabulum as you know it is the site of articulation of the three bones the ilium ischium and the pubis these bones are articulate to and form what we call the acetabulum that's round by a thick uh, labrum it is a deep uh, area concave shape the head of the uh, femur it is articulate with the acetabulum and form the hip joint so the hip joint is a ball and socket joint femoral head it is slightly asymmetric form about two-thirds of a sphere acetabulum it is an inverted u-shaped articular surface and the ligamentum teres with the artery to the femoral head is passed through the middle of the inverted u joint contact area throughout the range of movement of the hip joint 40 percent of the femoral head is in contact with the acetabular articular cartilage 10 percent of the femoral head is in contact with the labrum that surround the acetabulum we must remember the blood supply to the femoral head the femoral head receives the blood supply through the gamentum teres and it is important in children the importance of this artery decreases with age and probably insignificant in elderly patients. Oh, elderly person, sorry. The other blood supply to the head of the femur is through the ascending cervical branch that arises from the medial and lateral circumflex femoral artery. And this penetrates the capsule near the femoral attachment and ascend along the neck of the femur and the last blood supply through the medullary canal. It is important to know the blood supply and the pathology that could happen if something wrong happened in this area. What about the hip joint? We must know the details about the history and we must also look and know the patient's or the person gait and then to go to local examination and lastly there is a some special test that help us to reach a diagnosis and to decide what we'll do from the history we must ask about the symptoms some patients come with pain the other come with pain and the swelling or stiffness and limp as you know we must ask about the pain where is the site of the pain when it start duration and the character of the pain is important we must keep in our mind that this pain sometimes it is radiating pain from the other or nearby structure also we must ask about any possibility or any history of a trauma and what is the aggravating and relieving factor for this pain is it increased by walking is it increased by sitting down or getting up a stair, down a stairs? Very important to ask about these in history. So, pain arising in the hip joint is felt sometimes in the groin. Some patient presented just a groin pain, but it is related to the hip. And sometimes the patient are presented with history of pain in front of the thigh. So, pain at the anterior aspect of the thigh could be related to the hip joint. So, sometimes the knee pain occasionally is the only symptoms. But the one examination of the knee, there is no uh, problem in the knee. And this is radiating pain come from uh, uh, pathology in the hip joint. If the pain is interfering with normal daily activity, this may be a symptoms of hip arthritis. Pain at the back of the hip is seldom from the hip joint. It is usually derived or come from lumbar spine. The stiffness also other important symptoms. And the patient sometimes come with a history of difficulty with putting on socks, sitting in a low chair. So it is a sign of a stiffness of hip joint. Some patients come with history of limp 
it is a common and sometimes the patient complains that the leg is getting shorter than the other walking distance may be decreased or the patient start using a walking stick also we must ask about the past history any history of a trauma direct trauma could be previous dislocation car accident history of infection like tb medical disorders diabetic asthmatic some patients take a steroid and in high dose can cause a vascular necrosis of the head of the femur we must keep all these in our mind and also ask about neurological disorders and any surgical intervention previously and then we'll go to a clinical examination of the hip joint first of all we must look to the gait and we must know the normal gait for the person normal gait is usually a rhythmic rhythmical bipedal biphasic walking in which the lumbar spine hip joint and the legs move in one or uni session limping is the most common abnormality and can be defined as abnormality of the rhythmical normal biphasic walking if you look to the picture this is the normal gait and it passes usually in two phase this is the stance phase and the swinging phase the stand phase we can divide it to four steps first of all when the heel is touch the ground it's called the heel strike and early flat foot and then later flat foot and lastly the toe off and then the second phase called a swinging phase when the other foot is uh, go forward any disturbance in this gait regard as abnormal gait so we can identify uh, six different gates. We must know the antalgic gate, Trendelenburg gate, waddling gate, circumduction gate, gluteal maxima gate, and high stepping gate. What we mean by antalgic gate? Antalgic gate is a painful condition. Patient walk with reduced stance phase. The stance phase is the first phase the patient try to reduce the period of a stance phase so he will go in a hurry in a stance phase and the prolong in a swinging phase this is antalgic gait so the antalgic gait is due to pain in the hip joint the patient tries to reduce the uh, time for a stance phase what about the Trindenburg gait? The patient large on affected side and the pelvis drop on the sound side, as you see in this picture. When the patient start to load the affected area, the trunk is large to the affected side and the gluteal area of the other side, it drop, usually it raise up. And we will take it in a Trindenburg test. To be more clear for this gate called a trendelenburg gate the other famous gate called waddling gate usually see in dd age sometimes in those pregnant female they walk with a, a waddling gate so the body is sway from side to side on a wide base and usually seen in bilateral developmental dysplasia of the hip of the child after the child start to walk Circumduction gait in a fixed abduction deformity of the hip joint or in hemiparesis, the patient tried to move his limb while the, uh, dragging his body along with a limb in a semi-circle fashion. And we see it in, again, in a deformity or called the fixed abduction deformity of the hip or in those patients with paralysis. A gluteus maximus gait. In paralysis of a gluteus maximus, the patient's large backward during the stance phase, as you see in the picture. And lastly, high stepping gait, and this is 
a neuropathic gait due to foot drop. It is due to injury or due to uh, loss of function of the common peroneal nerve. So the patients cannot do dorsiflexion of the foot. And so the patient move with a high step gait to prevent fall on the ground. What we mean by a Trendelenburg test? Trendelenburg test, the patient is asked to stand up unassisted on each leg in turn. While standing on one leg, he or she has to lift the other leg by bending the knee. As you see here, the patient stand on a one leg and bending the other limb, bending the knee. Normally, the weight-bearing hip is held stable by the abductor muscle and the pelvis rise up on the unsupported side. This is normal. When the patient starts to stand on one leg and bending the knee 90 degree, facing the ground, the pelvis is elevated on unsupported side. This is normal. If the Trendelenburg positive we see that the hip joint is unstable or very painful. The pelvis is drop on the unsupported side. This is Trendelenburg positive. When we can see the Trendelenburg positive test, in which conditions? We see it in dislocation or subluxation of the hip, weakness of the abductors, in shortening of the femoral neck, and in painful disorders of the hip joint. Now shift to examination of the patient when the patient lying supine position. We must look, feel, move of the hip joint to complete the examination. We must look. What we see in looking for the lower limbs, we can identify shortening of the limb. Sometimes we can see swelling or wasting of the muscle. We must also notice any obvious deformity due to malposition of the limb. In baby, sometimes see asymmetry of the skin crease, and it is important in diagnosis of some uh, problems. Checking for limb length. Limb length can be gauged by looking at the ankle and heel. Measurement is more accurate with the leg in equal position. For real length measurement, we can take a fixed point from the anterior superior iliac spine to the medial malleolus and check the length of the limb in comparison to the other side. This is what we call real length. If the, if the measurement of the real length show shortening of the limb, so with the knee flexed, and heel together, it can be distinguished whether the, 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 the discrepancy is below or above the knee. And if we discover that the discrepancy is above the knee, it is necessary to determine whether the shortening lie above or below the greater trochanter. If there is no real length discrepancy, if there is no difference between the right or left limb, and there is an abnormal shortening or lengthening of the limb, we must check the apparent length. The apparent length, we take a fixed point in the midline of the body, like the umbilicus or the zephysternus, zip and check the distance from that fixed point to the medial malleus, and we can discover the apparent length. The usual cause is a fixed abduction deformity giving an appearance of shortening or fixed abduction deformity can give the appearance of lengthening. Then we go to feel. Feeling of the bone contour for any local tenderness, for any abnormality around the hip joint, and also we must identify the tender area and we must examine the lymph nodes and 
also the pulsation of the femoral artery and distal pulsation of the lower limb. Measurement of the muscle bulk is important, and sometimes we can identify that the muscle is atrophy if we compare the circumflex of the limb in comparison to the other side. Then we go and examine the movement of the hip joint. Usually the hip joint flex to 140 degree and the extension to zero to 10 degree. And we have an internal rotation about 45 degree, external rotation up to 40 degree, abduction 45 degree and adduction movement about 30 degree. The assessment of hip extension is difficult because any limitation can be easily obscured by movement of the pelvis. Thus, even a gross limitation of extension causing a fixed flexion deformity and can simply mask by arching the back in excessive lower doses. And fortunately, it can, be easy, it can easily unmask by performing Thomas test. So, when we have an fixed flexion deformity of the hip, the patient can move his trunk and put it in hyperlower doses to make the hip joint in extension. Sometimes we cannot discover by simple look to the limb as this patient have a fixed flexion deformity of the left hip joint or right hip joint. To overcome the hyperlower doses, we can do a Thomas test. Thomas test, usually, the unaffected limb flexed it until the thigh touched the trunk. And the examiner put his hand behind the back of the patient to see if there is the patient do hyperlordosis or not. When the patient do a flexion of the unaffected limb, the trunk becomes straight and the bag touch the table. When there is a fixed flexion deformity, we can identify that the hip joint go in a flexion position. And this is positive Thomas test. Internal rotation, this is the position of internal rotation. And we can see that, that uh, the patient can uh, move the internal rotation about 140, like external rotation of the leg. And this is the adduction about 30 degree and abduction about 45 degree. Any question regarding the hip examination? Hola. The Trendelenburg Muhim, Trendelenburg test, and Thomas test. What is the benefit of Trendelenburg test? You must know it. And what is the causes of Trendelenburg test? Positive. The Thomas test, the fixed flexion deformity of the hip joint. When we have a fixed flexion deformity, we have an exposed patient. If we look to the patient with fixed flexion deformity, we cannot uh, identify that the patient have a problem. Because the patient obscure يغطي على العوق الموجود عنده على fixed flexion deformity by hyperlord doses of the bag. وين نكتشفه من نسوي Thomas test. Okay, the Thomas test to help us in a fixed flexion deformity of the hip joint. زين. أسألكم سؤال وين وين كان we see the fixed flexion deformity? In which condition we can see the reflection deformity of the hip joint? Atkin Fikra Lamaku. Any idea? In osteoarthritis and avascular necrosis, we can identify fixed flexion deformity of the hip joint. 
Hip disorders are characteristically seen in certain well-defined age group. The age very important to give us a suggestion of the what we can see. For at birth, we must look for developmental dysplasia of the hip joint. At age of five to ten years, the perfect disease common. Ten to fifteen years, we can see slip capital femoral epiphysis. In adults, the osteoarthritis, avascular necrosis, and rheumatoid arthritis. What is the developmental dysplasia of the hip? It is one of the important subjects, and we must know the details about the developmental dysplasia of the hip regarding the clinical presentation, how we can diagnose the patient clinically, and the investigation to help us in diagnosis, and lastly, the treatment of the developmental dysplasia of the hip. المصطلح العامي المعروف هو الخلع الولادي طلاب كثير من الناس يجيك يقول لك خلع ولادي يعني الخلع حدث اثناء الولاده انتبهوا لهذا المصطلح طلاب الخلع هون ما يحدث اثناء الولاده nobody know how it occur there is a risk factor there is a cause for developmental dysplasia of the hip الولاده او طريقه الولاده ما لها علاقه بحدوث هذا المرض زين What is the developmental dysplasia of the hip? It is the femoral head, usually deeply seated in the acetabulum, and by surface tension of the synovial fluid, make it difficult to dislocate. In DDH, this shape and tension is abnormal, in addition to the capsular laxity. Again, this is the normal anatomy and relationship between the head of the femur that deeply seated in the acetabulum, and this is the abnormal picture of the DDH, developmental dysplasia of the hip. You see that the head of the femur is located outside the acetabulum. Also, if you look to the acetabulum, it appears not well deep. It is shallow acetabulum with a lot of changes that happen around the hip joint and the capsule involving the ligamentum teres. The hip joint, the head of the femur, and the neck of the femur is stabilized in its place by the shape of the femur again, that it is a ball and socket, also by tough ligament that hold the femur to its place. The first important ligament called the iliofemoral ligament, and also we have the pubofemoral ligament, and lastly, the ischiofemoral ligament. These ligaments, it is the three important ligaments, it is extra articular. The other ligament, it is intra articular, as you know, it is called the ligamentum teres. In the presence of the capsule and these ligaments, so the hip joint, it is stable in its place. What is the risk factor for DDH? First of all, it is a positive family history of DDH. Second, it is the first born baby. 80% of the patients are girls. Oligohydrominus, it is regarded as a risk factor for DDH. Bridge presentation, swaddling cultures, the twin babies also have a risk factor for DDH. 60% in the affecting the left side, 20% affect the right side and 20% affect the both right and left side. Torticollis, when we see torticollis, there is possibility of associated DDH with the problem. Also, the foot deformity, club foot, it is one of the congenital anomaly that sometimes affect the baby, and this may be associated with DDH. The condition previously known as congenital dislocation of the hip joint, and now it is called develop developmental dysplasia of the hip. Why? Because they show that shallow acetabulum, acetabular dysplasia can be associated with dislocation. So it is not 
the head that dislocated alone. Sometimes it is associated with shallow acetabulum with or without dislocation of the head of the femur. Instability of the head of the femur due to subluxation or dislocation, sometimes telarthurgical form of malarticulation between the head of the femur and the acetabulum. The instability is 5 to 20 per thousand live birth. However, most of these hips are stabilized spontaneously after a few weeks. So re-examination after three weeks from birth is important because there is decrease in the incidence of the instability of from 5 to 10, 20 to 1 to 2 per thousand infant. فنحن ما كل مريض يجي من البداية نعمل له examination. Sometimes we found that these child, child or newly born baby uh, have a subluxated hip or dislocated hip. For 5 to 20 percent of these newly born baby, if we re-examine them, this percentage will decrease to 1 to 2 per thousand infant. Girls are also much more affected and common by developmental dysplasia of the hip and the ratio 7 to 1. Female girls to boys, it is 7 to 1. The left hip is more again affected by the uh, DDH in comparison to the right, and one in five cases the condition is bilateral. Etiology and pathogenesis, important to know it in details. First of all, generalized ligamentum laxity is found in proportion of the patients and may be presented in parent or in relative. Uh, sometimes the development the dysplasia of the hip it is related to, to generalized ligament laxity and the second factor is the genetic factor and it is must be important for ddh and this turn in a families and even in entire population population for example along the north of the eastern and north of mediterranean seaboard Hormonal changes in later pregnancy, high level of maternal estrogen, progesterone, and relaxing hormones may aggravate the ligamentum laxity in an infant baby. Intrauterine malposition, especially a bridge presentation or a twins baby, may be affected by DDH. Unilateral dislocation usually affected the left hip mainly. And this is fit with the usual position of the baby inside the uterus. It is left occiput anterior. So it is liable for dislocation. Postnatal factor may play an important role in DDH, like a bad habit called the swaddling habit. And this will increase the possibility of DDH. What about the pathology for developmental dysplasia of the hip? The femoral head, in a case of persistent dislocation, the bony nucleus appears late and it is developmented, is retarded. The femoral head is dislocated upward and laterally in relation to the acetabulum. The femoral head neck, in most cases, the neck is antiverted and directed forward beyond the normal angle. Usually, the antiversion of the femoral neck in normal people, it is about 15 degrees. In children, it is about 25 degrees. But in DDH, the femoral neck antiversion, it is more than 25 degrees. The acetabulum, the acidic center, for the roof of the acetabulum, like that of the femoral head, is late in developing. The bone slopes upward at a steep angle, instead of forming a nearly horizontal roof for the acetabulum. And here, the acetabulum becomes flat, and there is no roof and no good depth for the head of the femur because of flattening of the acetabulum. The fibrocartilaginous lab labrum that surround the acetabulum, 
that usually increase the depth of the developing acetabulum. And this is folded into the cavity and become as a limbus, as a vesicle to prevent the reduction or uh, incoming of the head of the femur to the acetabulum. The capsule, of course, it is enlarged and become redundant. So the pathology of the dislocation involves the femoral head, femoral neck, acetabulum, fibrocartilaginous labrum, and lastly, affecting the capsule. This is the pathology that will lead to developmental dysplasia of the hip. What about the clinical feature of developmental dysplasia of the hip? طلاب نحن نخلي بالنا clinical feature is related to the age. The clinical feature of developmental dysplasia of the hip related to the age. The ideal is still unrealized, is to diagnose every cases at birth. نحن الهدف مالنا انه to catch the DDH early. When there is a family history of congenital dislocation of the hip and the bridge presentation, here the risk is increased. We concentrate on these children. For this reason, every new baby should be examined and screened for developmental dysplasia of the hip. For neonatal and early born babies, diagnosis by a special test called Ortlani test, and the other is Barlow's test. What is the Ortlani test? How we can do the Ortlani test? The baby thighs are held with the thumb medially applied of the examiner, and the fingers is up, put the index and the middle finger on the greater trochanter. The hip is flexed to 90 degree and gently abducted of the hip. Normally, there is a smooth abduction to almost 90 degree. In DDH, the, move, the movement is usually limited, but if the gentle push applied to the greater trochanter, we can feel a clunk as the dislocation reduced back to its position. It is a jerk of entry. Again, this picture, we will show. The examiner put his thumb, both thumb, into the medial aspect of the thigh, and the index and middle finger to the greater torque and top. In Ortlani test, the examiner tried to reduce the hip joint to its place by doing abduction movement. If there is obstacle and the examiner cannot do full abduction, then gentle push of the greater retrocantor, then the examiner feel a clunk that means the head enter to the acetabulum. It is called a jerk of entry. Barlow's test, it is reversed to Ortlani test. Ortlani tried to reduce the hip to its place. Barlow's, after reduction, we can dislocate the hip bag again by doing a Barlow's test. A Barlow's test, it is performed in a similar manner, but here the examiner thumb is placed in the groin area, and by grasping the upper thigh, an attempt is made to dislocate the femoral head by doing adduction movement of the hip joint. A Barlow's test here, is a trial for dislocation after reduction by Ortlani. Okay. After we do Ortlani and reduction of the hip joint, we can perform a Barlow's test to dislocate the hip again. This is important for neonatal diagnosis for dislocation of the hip joint, Barlow's and Ortlani test. To help us in diagnosis and to prove our diagnosis, we must do ultrasound. 
الالتراساوند يفيدنا باي معمار ان ويتش ايج جروب وي كان جيت بينيفيت فروم التراساوند ان ذوز بيلو ايج اوف 6 مانث اباف ايج اوف 6 مانث وي ديبند اون اكس تاي فور دايجنوزيس اند بروف ذا دايجنوزيس اوف دي دي اتش فور ذوز اندر ايج اوف 6 مانث ذا التراساوند كان هيلب اس تو بروف ذا دايجنوزيس اند اولسو هيلب اس ان فولو اب اوف ذا بيشنت After we do reduction and the treatment, the ultrasound feeds us. We ish, حتى نعمل follow up. هل المريض مستفاد من الوضعية مل ملخلة after reduction أو ما كوا استفادة منه؟ زين. ففات the ultrasound هو to prove the diagnosis and in follow up of the patient. In ultrasound, we can see the femoral head and its relation to the acetabulum. And the maturity of the femoral head and also the depth of the acetabulum can be calculated. And also, we can check the what we call the graph angle, that it is normally above 60 degree. If the graph angle is less than 60 degree, it means that the hip is subluxated or dislocated. هذا فيما يخص لنيونيت بيبي. نحن قمنا لنيونيت شلون شخصها clinically by Barlow's and Ortlani. Approve it by ultrasound. Late feature. Ideally, all children should be examined again after six months, twelve months, and eighteen months of age, to be sure that the late appearance of the DDH is not missed. If the child is above of six months, we can easily notice that the skin crease is asymmetry. And also, the hip does not fully abduct. If you look to the picture, here, there is asymmetry of the skin crease. On the affected side, the left side, there is an increase of the skin crease and the skin fold in comparison to the right side. But in increase the, diff the uh, fold, skin fold or skin crease, this means a positive sign for DDH. The other is limited abduction. Severely limited abduction means that the affected hip is dislocated or the affected side. Shortening, very important sign. If compare the hip to the normal, it is very obvious that the left hip is, or the left limb is short. For shortening, it is a sign or positive sign for DDH. طبعا الشورتنينج اذا كانت بايلاترال ما راح تبين راح تكون سيمتريكال فنخلي ببالنا ان بايلاترال ديسلوكيشن اوف ذا هيب الشورتنينج ما يفيدنا شيء كذلك السكين فولد اذا كان عندنا بايلاترال دي دي اتش ما راح يفيدنا بشيء بس ذا ليميتد ابدكشن ات از ا ساين اوف دي دي اتش سام تايمز ان بايلاترال ديسلوكيشن ذير از بايلاترال ليميتد ابدكشن موفمنت اوف ذا هيب جوينت از يو سي هير ان ذيس بيكتشر There is an increase in the skin fold in comparison to the right side, and also there is limited abduction of the affected side. Here, where is the shortening? Where is the uh, affected side? Is it in the right or in the left side? When you right. Go, right, good, excellent. Why? An increase in the skin fold on the right and limited abduction. Excellent. An increase the skin fold and... Usually, here on the left side. But sometimes we can find it in the right side, in 20%. And in 20%, it will be bilateral. Here, what is the deformity? Where is the problem? Right in the left. Yes, shortening and slightly externally rotated. Slightly external rotation. Also, it is another sign for dislocation. But here, it is the left side, look short, and in external rotated position. Also here, it is left side affected by DDH. Thumb examination, it is difficult. thumb examination to feel the head of the femur in the groin. But it is difficult sometimes, but but thumb examination to the groin may feel that the femoral head is missing, like shoulder dislocation. But in hip dislocation, it is difficult. If the child is woke, إذا الطفل يبدي يمشي فوق العمر سنة سنتين يبدي يمشي الطفل تمام بعد السنة فا if it is unilateral the child walk with limping gait and if it is bilateral the child walk with 
what we called Tisamihal walking if bilateral dislocation of the hip. Waddling gait. Excellent. Waddling gait. Waddling gait. Galiazi sign, again, to demonstrate that the abnormality of the length of the limbs. If compared right to left side, there is abnormal shortening of the right side. For how they more Galiazi sign? Now it is clear. Okay. In bilateral dislocation, again, it is difficult to detect it because there is no asymmetry of the skin fold. And only if the child is walk is walk with waddling gait, or sometimes it is missing waddling gait. ما أي واحد يقدر يشخص الوادلين جيت؟ الطفل عايم شيء فما ينتهبون عليها. خاصة الأطفال أول ما يبدون يمشون تكون مشيتة مشوية مخربطة يمشي ويعثر ويقع بداية المشي مالتهم. فالأهل ما ينتبهون على الوادلين جيت. Okay. ف in bilateral dislocation the diagnosis it can more difficult. ما مثل unilateral. The unilateral من يمشي الطفل يمشي limping. حتى إذا هو missed diagnosis يجوك الأهل يقول لك هذا الطفل يمشي limping يعوج. Then they bring him to the uh, doctor and discover the condition. Hello, Bakum, Tullab. And the DDH is a painless limping. Then we have the perfect disease or painful limping. Hello, Bakum. The Atfal, the Khal Al-Wadi, is shown. But in some cases, the Khal Mashi Malatu, then, more than a year and a half, 18 months, الخلع الوادي قد تكون هي السبب بس هي ما دائما السبب ممكن الاطفال مع وجود الخلع الوادي يمشي على نفس العمر المقرر يعني بسنه سنه وشهر سنه وشهرين يبدا يمشي اذا مشي ويوني لاترال ليمبينج جيت اذا باي لاترال وادلينج جيت اوكي وبوث اوف ذيم تكون يعني الوادلينج جيت والليمبينج جيت هي بينلس ليمبينج اوكي هايبر لور دوسز هايبر لور دوسز of the bag, it is a sign of bilateral dislocation of the hip. So, we see the child is on hyperlordosis with waddling gait. This is a big deal to have a child with a child. I have said that late walking is not a marked feature, but in children who do not walk by age of 18 months, DDH must be excluded. I said that. X-ray examination. Amity Kunun feed the X-ray examination. The X-ray examination is feed na bil atfal al amarum fawq al sittat ashur. It is helpful in older children, older than six months. Naghtimid al X-ray in diagnosis and prove the diagnosis of DDH. Again, basic feed now. Other benefit of X-ray for diagnosis and what? Many of. Doctor Farhad. Excellent follow up. نحنا من الشخص نحنا بدي نعالج تمام عندنا طرق للعلاج. بإيش نعالج باستخدام أشياء مختلفة. حتى نقول انه احنا استفدنا من العلاج والطفل هذا وبدا يصير يتحسن وضعه الديبث اوف ذا سيتابلم تزداد الهيد اوف ذا فيمر سنتر ان اتس بليس فنحتاج الى فولو اب باي اكس اي اند كلينيكال اكزامينشن فالكلينيكال اكزامينشن امبورتنت اولسو الاكس اي تو بروف ذا دايجنوزيس اند هيلب اس ان فولو اب هل هو حيتحسن الا كل شيء ما حيستفاد في بعض الاحيان نقول كلينيكلي ويل بس ذا اكس اي از باد so we stop the conservative method treatment and we go to operative treatment. So in DDH, the ossific center of the femoral head is underdeveloped. And from its position, it may be apparent that the head is displaced upward and outward. What do we center. The nucleus or the center of the head. مثل ما تعرفون انه الهيد اوف ذا فيمر بالاطفال هو كارتليجنس مينلي. الاوسيفيك سنتر ما تبدي تظهر الا بعد العمر ست اشهر. قبل الست اشهر ماكو اوسيفيك نيوكليوس. ولهذا راح نكون انه شويه مخربطه الامور اذا تاخذ اكس للاطفال الجول ست اشهر. نقول ما نستفاد منه فنستفاد من الالترا ساوند. <تصفيق> 
بس بالاعمار فوق الستة اشهر الاوسفيك نيوكليوس راح تكون مور كلير اند وي ديبند اون امبورتنت لاينز ذات درو ات ايماجينري لاين ذات درو ات اون ذا اكس راي اند هيلب اس ان دايجنوزيس ذيز لاينز كولد ذا هيلجن راينر لاين اللي هو ترانسفيرس لاين هذا الخط الابيض هو الهنجر هيلجن راينر لاين ذات باس ثرو ذا تراي راديت كارتليج شنو تراي راديت كارتليج يعني سنتر بوينت اوف ذا اسيتابيلم سايت اوف اتاتشمنت اوف ثري بونز الاليوم والاستيوم والبيوبس وهسه بيتصلون بسنتر بوينت اوف ذا اسيتابيلم كولد ذا تراي راديت كارتليج فاذا مررنا خط ترانسفيرسلي ثرو ذا تراي راديت كارتليج ذيس از كولد هيلجن راينر لاين اور ترانسفيرس لاين The other line called Perkins line. It is a vertical line. هذا الخط الأسود. On the transverse line. Perkins line. It is a vertical line on the transverse line. And after that, we look to the center of the femur, to the nucleus. Where is it? نحنا من من هذا transverse line وال vertical line. We divide the hip to four quarter. تمام أربع مربعات. Two of it superior, two inferior, two medial, and two lateral. The nucleus of the femur should lie in the medial and downward part. This is the normal side for the nucleus, medially and downward. In this location, this is the the nucleus is located in the lateral up position. The other line, it is called the Shenton line. The Shenton line, it is a dome-shaped line that passes from the uh, inner surface of the neck of the femur, between the inferior surface of the superior pubic rami. This is the dome shape. Usually, it is continuous line with no disturbance of this line. Acetabular index. Is the angle between the acetabulum and Hilgen liner line. يعني في بعض الأحيان نحتاج إلى the acetabular index to calculate whether it is less than 30 or above than 30. And normally, it should be less than 30. This is the angle between the roof of the acetabulum and the transverse line. فإذا كانت هاي الأنجل أقل من 30 درجة تعتبر طبيعية. أكثر من 30 درجة هون بال right side it is abnormal. X-ray finding in DDH, first of all, we can see delayed appearance of the ossific nucleus if it is bilateral or unilateral. A small ossific nucleus in comparison to unaffected side. This is plastic or shallow acetabulum, a proximal displacement of the femur. So, what is your idea about this? X-ray picture. If we draw the vertical line and horizontal line, any problem here? This is the ossific nucleus, and it is in good relation to the acetabulum. It is medial to the vertical line and inferior to the horizontal line, so it is in normal position. Also, on the right side, the head or the nucleus of the femoral head is located. Inferior to the transverse line and medial to the vertical line. You can identify it. Okay. Also, the acetabulum index is less than 30 degree, but it is normal X-ray. While here, where is the abnormality? بالرايت بالرايت الطريق توصف لنا الرايت ايش بيها؟ عشان كوبر لي رايت سايد ليش قلت بالرايت سايد اب نورمال؟ اول شيء Delay appearance or delay ossification of the uh, nucleus. If I compare the right side of the nucleus 
بالليفت سايد ايش بيها؟ يعني الحجم ماله اصغر تمام؟ اثنين البوزيشن it is located in the superior to the transverse line and lateral to the vertical line. The nucleus size is less, larger, smaller, and the position of the nucleus it is above the transverse line and lateral to the vertical to the vertical line. To the perpendicular line. كذلك إذا الواحد تخيل الشنتل لاين هوني also disturb it is not like a dome shape it is disturb شنتل لاين أي سؤال استفسار لحد هون طلاب؟ دكتور بس منظر السوادلينج هابت السوادلينج السوادلينج على القماط عيني كلتنا كنا تقمطنا صح ولا لا؟ زين انت كيف كنت تقمطت من كنت صغير وكذلك انا ايام زمان القماط موجود لحد الان موجود بس هل كل من تقمط صار عنده خلع ولادي؟ الجواب لا بس في شافوا انه السوادلينج هابت تزيد نسبه الخلع يعني المريض اللي عنده او الطفل اللي عنده سبلاكسيشن او بدايه الديسلوكيشن ممكن السوادلينج يعني سوادلينج ايش يعمل؟ السوادلينج هابت يخلي الهيب جوينت ان ادكشن مو ابدكشن هسه احنا العادات مالنا نحن يعني عاداتنا هون بالعراق انه السوادلينج لقماط يخلون الطفل ان ادكشن اكو بعض الدول مثل الصين يخلون شنو الطفل ان ابدكشن الام تشيل الطفل على ظهرها او على بطنه زين ان ابدكشن بوزيشن غير شيء بالتلفزيون بالافلام تمام ولا لا لفارقه يشيلوهم على ظهرهم ان ابدكشن فحتى اللي عنده خلع هو راح يتعالج بهالوضع هذا بس نحن عندنا اذا تخلينه هو عنده سبلاكسيشن اور مايلد ديسلوكيشن اوف ذا هيب وتخلينه ان ادكشن بوزيشن يعني الرجلين مطبوقين وحده على الاخ راح تزيد البوسيبيلتي اوف ديسلوكيشن فوحده من الاشياء يسموها الباد هابت اور ريسك فاكتور فور ديفلوبمنتال ديسبيزي اوف ذا هيب واضحه جيد دكتور ولهذا نحن نحن هسه بالعلاج مالنا ما الخلع العادي الهيب خلينا ان ابدكشن يعني مجرد خلينا ابدكشن الاطفال الجو السني كل شيء يستفادون من هالوضع افتر ريدكشن طبعا ابدكشن افتر ريدكشن اوف ذا هيب يستفاد الطفل ممكن تكون هذا يعني ثيرابيوتيك بالنسبه له وما راح يحتاج غير شيء راح ناخذه ونناقشه بطريقه العلاج زين سؤال طلاب اذا النيوكليوس تشوفون هاي النيوكليوس الدائره الحمراء نيوكليوس اذا كانت بالزائد يعني صارت هوني لا هي ابف ولا هي بيلو ولا هي ميديال ولا هي لاترال تو ذا فيرتيكال لاين ايش تعني لنا هذا الشيء يعني احنا بالاطفال اللي اوقات نشوفه انه النيوكليوس ما كل الشاسع هذه واضحه 100% ديسلوكيشن تمام ولا لا ابف ذا ترانسفيرس لاين ولاترال تو ذا فيرتيكال لاين زين إذا هاي النقطة أو هاي الوضعية كانت بالزائد بال بالسنتر إيش تعني لنا هذه؟ إز إت نورمال أور أب نورمال؟ أكيد هي أب نورمال بس إيش نعني؟ شو نقول عليها لهذه؟ نقول ديسلوكيشن؟ إيش رأيكم؟ دكتور سبلاكسيشن سبلاكسيشن إت إز سبلاكسيتد هيب يعني هوني راح هم نتخذ اجراءات بس تكون ديسلوكيشن بس لازم نتخذ فد اجراء حتى نجبر الهيد اوف ذا فيمر تو بي سنتر ان ذا اسيتابيلم فهم تعتبر انه حاله مرضيه تحتاج الى المتابعه والعلاج طبعا خلع ولادي ما مجرد انه انت عالجت وانتهى الخلع ولادي هسه نجي نحكي بالعلاج مالته هي عندنا ستيبس بالتريتمنت واهم التريتمنت هو الفولو اب يعني انت مو مجرد انه عملت التريتمنت اولي وها هي انتهينا لا الفولو اب كلش مهم في بعض الاحيان نحتاج فولو اب اب تو 1 يير حتى نقول ان الامور صارت مرضيه بالنسبه لنا وللمريض او لاهل المريض او غير مرضيه الخلع الولادي يسمونه ديفلوبمنتال ديسبليزيا اوف ذا هيب زين هسه يسموه يسموه ديفلوبمنتال ديسلوكيشن اوف ذا هيب هسه الاسم الجديد اللي راح يطرح بالكتب ديفلوبمنتال ديسلوكيشن اوف ذا هيب فهي تعتمد على العمق بالتشخيص مالتها ويعتمد على العمق بالعلاج. 
العمق كلش مهم يختار لك طريقه التشخيص وطريقه العلاج فيري امبورتنت نخلي بالنا الايج اوف ذا بيشنت ات تايم اوف بريزنتيشن كلش مهمه زين فد الالترا ساوند يفيدنا بالايرلي دايجنوزيز ان ذوز تشيلدرن بلو ايج اوف 6 مانث وبها المحاذير مالته الكلينيكال اكزامينشن هو رقم واحد بالتشخيص الكلينيكال اكزامينشن رقم واحد بالاطفال الجول ست شهور عندنا الاورتلاني والبارلوس تيست طبعا بالاضافه للشورتنينج والسكين كريز هم تفيدنا بس تكون مور اوبفيوس ان ذوز ابف ايج اوف 6 مانث تكون اوضح فتجذب الانتباه اكثر انه هي ككلينيكال دايجنوزيز فور دي دي اتش اوكي نحن بالخلع الرياضي هم نرجع مرت الاخ من ناخذ الهيستوري اول ما يجيك طفل يعني نحن بالاستشاريه او بالعيادات بنجيب لنا طفل نسالهم فيميل راسا نخلي ببالنا خلع هاي رقم واحد حتى اذا ما عندهم يعني جاي على غير شغله كن واقع شيء لازم تشيك فور دي دي اج لان فيري ايزي تو كاتش ان دايجنوزد بيشنت يعني هسه نروح للاستشاري مثلا مستشفى الخنساء نقعد بالاستشاريه ونعمل سكرين على الاطفال اللي يجون خاصة اللي يجون مثل الاطفال اللي يجي على تشست انفكشن او دياريا او شيء تعمل سكرين عليهم تشوف تلقي لك من 100 تلقي لك بعد اثنين ثلاثي ان دايجنوزد سبلاكسيتد اور ديسكيتد هيب جاست كلينيكال دايجنوزيز زين تو بروف ذات باي الترا ساوند اند اكس راي فالفيرست بورن بيبي اذا كانت فيميل اذا كانت سيزيريان سيكشن زين بوزيتيف فاميلي هيستوري اوف دي دي اتش ريز ذا سسبيشن اوف دي دي اتش نخلي بالنا هاي الامور اوكي نحن حتوقف هون قلت لكم عندي التزام بالكليه نكمل ان شاء الله ال